Hi, everyone. This is Mike with episode 71 of Getting Everyone Moving, brought to you by Palms to Pines Parasports. Today, I have my friend, uh, Dee Henry. Hi, Dee. Hi, Mike. All right, Dee. So tell us, give us some history as to how you got involved in the world of wheelchair tennis. Well, when I was in college, I was playing tennis one day, and I said, I really like this game. I'm going to play this game until I'm 80, even if my nephew has to push me around in a wheelchair. When I found out about wheelchair tennis, I bought my life membership into National Wheelchair Foundation. <laughs> wow. And t so tell us, I mean, give us some stories about, you know, what you've done, because you've done some amazing things. Well, I actually was on the court with Brad Parks at, um, um, with the, let's see, the guy's name was uh, Tom, Mike Bra Braden, let's see, Vic. Vic Braden Tennis Academy, okay, and he's and I got to see Brad hit, roll to the net, playing doubles. It was amazing, and I said, "Wow, this is pretty cool." And Brad said, "If you know anybody in a wheelchair, then please introduce them to wheelchair tennis." I don't know anybody. Ten years later, maybe eleven, um, I met a little boy that was two years old. He was he was he was going to be in a wheelchair. So as a result was, uh, we started with the ping pong paddle and balloon. And um, about a year later, I met a, uh, a girl who was uh, at, at Biola. And this gal had um, an old Evan Jennings chair, you know, like they get it at the uh, retirement centers. Bottom line, I asked her, do you play wheelchair tennis? She says, only with my dad. I can't get anybody else to play. So I said, there we go. So that was my first student. Uh, and Mike Watson came up and he, he knew what we were doing and we didn't have tennis courts at Viola. We were over at Long River Park. Somebody saw us, connect me with um, um, Mike Watson, who's uh, deceased now, wonderful man. And what he did was he gave me um, some movement experiences for the girl to try, try out. And just little by little, um, she got a little bit better and we had some fun. But the really thing that sparked us was the Intercollegiate Tennis Coaches Association. I was a coach, a college coach for my first 40 years, 45 years of Viola. And they asked every coach to put something back into the game. Well, since I've been working with this gal and then the little boy was four by this time, all of a sudden we decided one of the things we would do is do a wheelchair clinic. And so that's kind of how we got it started. And uh, one of my former students uh, came down and he was teaching wheelchair tennis and he did a little clinic for us. Uh, it was, and it should, we've since the clinic, we've done a weekly uh, event. At, um, but right now we're not at Biola because it's shut down. Right. <laughs> Our playing at La Habra Tennis Center, though, that's a great group over there. I Tennis is doing a wonderful job for us. Yep. In terms of uh, collegiate level tennis, um, I know that it is growing. Um, there's what San Diego State uh, in California and a number of other schools. Um, was it difficult to get Viola to actually, uh, you know, accept wheelchair tennis and, you know, promote it? Um, that's an interesting question. Um, when when I when I realized, you know, we're gonna we have a girl that's that's strong enough to play for Biola, and you have to have one person who's a student, and then you have to have one person who works out with you. So um, at the collegiate championship, there were recently were eight collegiate teams, uh, all Division One except Biola, and, and my athletic director is just wonderful, and she the collegiate team has to do some service assignments every semester because they are a division two school and that's required of them in NCAA. So as a result, we, we've been working with them. The intercollegiate team um, did uh, something for special needs athletes one semester and, and the oh, one with the most recent one was a wheelchair tournament. The girls ran a doubles tournament with our top players and on a three or four course. And then we had um, a group of people played on a couple of courts that were um, 
just kind of recreational players and, and they team up with the guys and last day, last minute, somebody couldn't make it. So I put uh, one of our wheelchair players or our college players in a wheelchair. Boy, I tell you, that was just amazing. Wow, you gotta be kidding me. This is so difficult. And their strokes are great, their strategy is great, but they can't get there. If you can't get there, you can't hit the ball. So it was a real learning experience. And I had uh, my um, seven, eight year olds over on a court with the girls. So we had uh, four of those little guys that used a couple of little small courts and they had a wonderful time. So that's kind of been our involvement with intercollegiate. Uh, in, um, you know, since I'm no longer coaching there. But um, when I approached uh, um, my athletic director about uh, being a part of this intercollegiate championship, she said, what do I need to do? And I gave her Evan's number um, and she talked with him and she says, we're doing it. We're gonna let you guys go. Um, so it's pretty exciting. Um, the team did well, um, got beat by Michigan, but they were the eventual runner up. So it wasn't too bad, University of Michigan. Then uh, the, my players won uh, two matches, uh, once against Auburn and once against uh, University of Alabama, Huntsburg, Huntsburg, Huntsville, something of that nature. Yeah. Huntsville. And the girl, oh my goodness, she was the uh, consolation winner. So. Wow. That's terrific. So you've you've been involved with the sport of wheelchair tennis, I mean, for a long time. Um, talk more about, you know, what motivated you personally um, to become involved? Well, like I said, when I was in college, I said I want to play wheelchair tennis when I'm 80. So I'm not quite there yet. But, you know, I've got a few more years to practice up before I'm ready to go uh, into the wheelchair. But uh, Bottom line is, uh, just seeing Brad Brad Parks and playing with able-bodied people. I, this is great. There is no other wheelchair sport where you can compete with an able-bodied person and it be even. Even uh, that I think is the the really exciting things. Now, one of the boys that, that I've worked with since he's eight is like 19 years old now, and his uh, senior year of high school, he decided he wanted to be on the tennis team, and um, so. In several matches he played doubles and then his last match the coach says well Henry what would you, what would you like who would you like to have as your partner he said actually I'd like to play singles and he beat the guy <laughs> that way is little tennis like when we started Henry out we started out with a red ball and this, the 36 foot court and we moved him up pretty quickly um, by the time he was 10 years old he was playing his first tournament so it's, it's, the pathway is red ball, orange ball, green ball, tournament play, high school tennis team, and then college tennis team. So he's one that went with me this year. So that's, uh, it's just been a steady involvement, I would say. Um, just the seeing the look on a person's face when they can hit a tennis ball again. Uh, I, I've got tons of stories I would tell you, but uh, you can ask me for some specific. Scott, the boy I started with, is I think he's 39 now. So I've been doing wheelchair tennis for 37 years. Wow. Talk about the evolution of the game. I mean, how, how has it changed? Oh, um, I think the biggest things that I've seen change is, you know, we went from National Wheelchair Foundation and then USTA um, said, hey, this is something we want, we want to en endorse this. And so USTA, uh, came alongside and all of us who had life membership in USTA, uh, well, actually that, uh, then when I did the wheelchair, it was lifetime membership in wheelchair tennis. My membership was transferred right on over to USTA wheelchair tennis for them. Um, so uh, from there, um, I think the biggest step was when they got the new facility in Florida uh, they have this player development program. U.S. has a player development program for their stand-up players. And they also, alongside them, they, work, they, train, at, they train right there in the same facility where the uh, um, wheelchair players train. And they, the wheelchair, outstanding wheelchair players are on a weight training program. They're on a fitness program. Um, 
Martin Blackman has done a great job of helping incorporate that. And uh, Jason Harnett is, and Jason Allen are just, they're doing a great job. Uh, we're really trying to promote wheelchair tennis. Uh, right now, there are, um, in Net Generation, you might, are you familiar with Net Generation? You probably are, okay. Anyway, with, with Net Gen, they have certain people that just say, hey, let's focus on wheelchair players. Mm -hmm. So we have providers all over. And um, I think there's, I, I don't know how many there are, but anyway, um, we're reaching out to those people, um, getting people from uh, um, various areas that checking to see if we can, what we can do to get players, pre pro, pros prepared to teach and players who will come to be coached. And uh, the wheelchair has changed a great deal since I've seen it. Um, and I used to, and, and still, some people are very much more comfortable in their own chair than they are in, in a different chair. So I just take them where they're at. And, and then we, we, they begin to hit the ball and they, I've got wheelchairs available that people have outgrown and they you know, let us use them and our students get a chance to try it from a wheelchair and that's amazing too. So it just, it has changed a little bit in terms of uh, the promotion I think is the biggest thing. They're doing a very good job. USC is doing an outstanding job with that. So do you, do you foresee a lot more youth becoming involved in wheelchair tennis? Well, you know, you the secret is, I mean, I started out with uh, with my two year old, and by the time he was about ten, he started liking baseball more. Um, and and all of a sudden, here comes T.J. Ballard, and T.J. Um, was going to be in his chair, and he he said he loved it, and he was uh, he won the juniors division many many years ago, and um, then another little kid comes in it and he's Eddie and Eddie did really well. He got ranked 168 in the world by the time he uh, finished his college degree. Um, so then all of a sudden you get new kids you, you got Henry and, and JJ and Eliel all came along when they're 12 and eight, 10 <laughs> and they, uh, they, began to compete and then now we've got Micah and Zach that are Zach I've been working with since he's four I mean uh, Micah and he and Zach are like eight and nine now so they're just a steady stream there's been a really steady stream of of players and so you just take them where they are and then life happens and then they get married and then they got kids and they don't come back and all of a sudden their kids are playing tennis and they're playing tennis with them. And now they're back playing tournament tennis. And this is exciting, you know, you can play tennis till, till you're like, um, one guy used to be, he was the man to beat and he beat more open players than anybody else, but he was 85. He beat them when he, they were like 12. <laughs> yeah, but still, that's amazing. Well, playing when he was 85. <laughs> I'm Talk a little bit, you know, during non-COVID times about the group that comes um, weekly to play. Who are they? I mean, yeah. Um, most of them are people who have learned to play at Biola. Um, that just, it's just been, you know, you get one and then somebody else comes and they tell somebody else and that's how it, how it happens. And they, they're a very congenial group and that makes it fun for everybody. Um, so, so it's my pleasure to work with them. We have now a community tennis association that kind of helps uh, direct tennis at this particular point. Um, uh, over 70 people have come on our campus wow. to learn how to play wheelchair tennis in the 30 some years that I've been there. Now they've all not just played every once, you know, it's like, here, okay, we have a 16 group comes in and they're all um, spinal bifida, all right? Yeah. And, but three of those became players, yeah. players. So, and, and that's okay, you know, it's like, 
we want to be, be there for people and give them an opportunity to just expose, be exposed to tennis. Uh, I had a guy one time, he was visiting campus and, and his, um, his wife was a real good friend of a tennis player. And I bumped into her and she introduced me. We went out to the courts that night because we were going to have our group play and the kids said, the guy got injured in the Gulf War. And she, he says, I don't ever remember tennis being this so much fun. <laughs> it's really very neat. I had a little gal one time and, and she didn't push her chair very well. So I just says, hey, you know what? You need to try to push, push, glide, push, push, glide. Every time you're on some flat surface, practice your person glide. Next week she came to me, she was 13 at this time and she's coach, coach, guess what? I learned, I, I practiced my push and glide at the mall. And I was able to push myself with my friends when we went shopping at the mall. Now, <laughs> isn't that important? I think that's horribly important. So you take a person wherever they are, they learn, they hit a ball. And then all of a sudden they say, I think I'll try this. I think I'll try that. And next thing you know, they're driving a car, they're going to college, they're, um, Pro providing for themselves and what does that do for a person you know when a person is saying man i can uh, take care of myself now it does something to a person to give them more um sense of worth it's a whole lot better than just sitting around the house you know so we can do that that's what i like to do so um what you've described is um you know sports it's more than sports, right? You're learning independence. Uh, you're learning life skills. All, all those life 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 lessons. Uh, yes. so, so you you've seen that uh, with the people that you've been working with over and over and over. The discipline necessarily, the the never give up, never quit, uh, adjusting. This isn't working. So how do I adjust to that? Those are skills that are horribly important. Oh, I've got to make a decision. Do I let the ball bounce? Do I hit it after one bounce, after two bounces? Um, oh my goodness, after I hit the ball, I better not just be, oh, you know, oh, look how good I am. You know, instead it's like, um, I better get ready to hit that next shot. I can't be, you know, all about my glory. It's, <laughs> it's not just, I did something great. I'm so excited. No, I got to get ready for the next one. It's just going to, life is just going to move, move on and you got to stay where you are, stay in the time zone that you're in your brain. You got to stay in the moment. You can't be thinking, Oh, well, I did so badly. Then again, you can't say I did so well. No, we got to move on. You just got to keep going. You know, I, I think that adaptive sports, provides a great venue for uh, inclusion. Um, you know, one thing I observed when I came to, um, you know, one of your programs was uh, the children of some of the participants, you know, were playing along with their, with their parent. Um, can you talk more about, you know, inclusion and how, how we create more societal inclusion? Um, let's see, at the event that we were at, it's called a um, showcase last week. Uh, we not only had little kids, we had what, eight, something like eight, six little kids. And then two were siblings of the little kids. And we had some small chairs there. So that we popped them in those small chairs so that they got to participate too. And I think when they realized, oh my goodness, this is really difficult. Uh, and my brother's doing this all the time. And it's, it's not just flat land that he's having to push on. Um, maybe I should be a little more, um, um, I don't know, congenial with him. Uh, shouldn't, you know, I, I shouldn't bug him as much or whatever, but I think that helps the family dynamics a little bit. So um, I think you learn so much when you're with people who have special challenges. And so therefore it, it, it's, it's like, they're doing something that I wouldn't, I would, it would be impossible to do, I would think. And so therefore you grow in respect for people who have different needs than yours. And I think respect is something that we're a little short on a lot of times. So respect is a huge one, I think. Um, and, and just giving another person a chance to get in a chair. 
<laughs> like we did with our athletes, um, like we did with those children last week. It's awesome. And so I think appreciation of, of one another, all good stuff. So are, are you still playing tennis, Dee? <laughs> I haven't been on the court for, um, well, let's see. I haven't been on the court for almost 24 hours. <laughs> I guess you're still playing then. Yeah, I, at, the, at the funeral I was at recently, my nephew says, well, Aunt Dee, you still playing tennis? And that, and that was on a Tuesday. And I said, well, I haven't been on the court since Saturday. <laughs> so yes. Um, I'm, my knees are, are uh, have suffered through some, um, you know, the, the COVID-19, we used to call it a freshman 15, right? Where you gain 15 pounds. Well, I've, I've had the COVID-19 problem here this year, that, that problem. <laughs> and my knees don't like that. So, um, anyway, but I, I have played from a chair once in a while. So that's always good too, but I can still serve. I can still hit my shots and. I don't move super well, so I have to anticipate even more. I play golf once a week. You play golf too. So, you, I mean, you've stayed. Relative. Being active, how's that? You've been active, yeah, yeah. Um, it's, it's just an important thing in life to stay active. Yes, it is. Um, I, I usually warm up with the players when they arrive. So, yeah. Definitely, I still play. So, I just don't compare that. Maybe yeah. when I'm eight, maybe I'll start playing again. There you go. <laughs> always have to have something to look forward to. <laughs> so we're, we're coming towards the end of our, our interview. Um, what are some final words that you'd like to leave with our audience? Well, if you see somebody in a chair, encourage them to get involved in a tennis program. If you are interested in coaching a tennis program, contact Southern Cal. They have an upcoming uh, tennis cl clinic. It's a, you know, it's just a whole different world out there. And if you begin to embrace the opportunities, uh, I think you'll be very rewarded. Great. Dee, thanks so much. Really appreciate it. My pleasure, Mike. <laughs>